All right, good afternoon, Dr. Alvarez. Um, this is my first webcam video, so I hope it goes well. <clears throat> I've tried this a couple times, and I keep stopping myself because I feel like I'm rambling. Um, so hopefully I don't do that this time. Uh, my, pa my paper is called, just one second. My paper is called A Body of Broken Laws, a Linguistic and Sociological uh, a linguistic sociological analysis of describing immigrants as illegal. And but before I start talking about my paper, I want to talk a little bit about political correctness. Um, so right now, especially, there's a lot of talk about what's politically correct in culture. I mean, we have somebody like Donald Trump going on the television every night and saying all sorts of awful things, including you know that all Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers and so forth. And then also Jeb Bush saying that, you know, calling people anchor babies. Well, when Jeb Bush was criticized for that, he said that that's just political correct. You know, it's just basically he dismissed it. It's nonsense. And that that's what I want to talk about with political correctness is that it's when somebody says something that's problematic or that's hurtful or that some people find offensive, um, there's a, 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 there's a reason that it's offensive. There's a reason that it's hurtful. But also when somebody describes something as just politically correct, what that's saying is, is that it doesn't really matter. And also that people, basically people are being overly sensitive that, and then using any other terminology other than anchor baby or illegal alien or legal immigrant, as my paper will talk about, is just pandering to an audience. So that's problematic for several reasons. One of which, one of which is that it, um, it individualizes a larger issue. So when we start talking about things as politically correct, then the reason, the reason sort of inherent or behind that term for using other terminology is that somebody's looking out for their own self-interest. So then that dismisses the whole notion of how language can have really detrimental effects on people in society. And that's really what I want to talk about, uh, because language does have very very large impacts on what happens in society. So um, the point is, is that what we say matters, right? And to illustrate this, I just want to I want to read a little bit from my paper uh, before I go on to talk a little bit about kind of how language matters and um, what what role it has in society. Okay, skip the abstract again. My paper is called "The Body of Broken Laws," which kind of sounds a little bit like. A detective novel, but I like the title. A Linguistic Sociocultural socio Analysis of Describing Immigrants as Illegal. Okay, so exordium. Um, when someone patterns a series of vocal intonations complete with pauses, inflections, and inflections, we might, we might understand this to be a sentence, an ordered coalescence of phonetic and semantic utterances. However, we only understand this provided we're equipped with the ability to mentally decode that auditory information and socially educated enough to interpret it. At the crudest level, says, excuse me, quote, at the crudest level of description, we may say that a language associates sound and meaning in a particular way, end quote, according to linguistic professor and renowned political dissident Noam Chomsky. Quote, however, it is equally clear that the actual observed use of language, actual performance, does not simply reflect the sound meaning connections established by the system of linguistic rules, end quote. The complex process that our mind undergoes when we perceive and interpret language is contingent upon a multitude of internal and external factors often taken for granted in our daily lives. Far more than just a perception of harmonic meaning, our linguistic competence includes extra-linguistic beliefs influential stimuli that are, quote, that are not properly speaking aspects of language, end quote. Perspective, social reality, Weltanschauung, religion, ideology, any predominant, any predominant belief system can filter and shape the nature of our linguistic competence. Sorry for um, pausing a little bit and stopping sometimes, but it's a little difficult to speak clearly right now. We're innately born with the ability to speak. We use words so often, speak them throughout our days, but we do not always stop to think what they are. Words are somewhat arbitrary noises that form pictures in our mind. They are the sound of symbols. Words, therefore, are very effective tools for forming thoughts and shaping the pro thought process and can be explained by three distinctive terms, 
sign, signified, and signifier. Sign, a concept and a sound image. Signified, the concept, what is being referred to in reality, and signifier, the sound image, a mental picture that, rel that relationally links the sign to the signified what comes to mind according to your experience and memory from the sound of a word. Each semiotic form relies on the other for its meaning. A sign or word can have no meaning without something to signify it, a tangible object, a symbol that situates it in your lived experience and mind. Working in conjunction, the influence of, the, of these semiotic functions are multitudinous. Words are more than just harbingers of symbolic structure. They are instructions. They indicate the relationship between objects, people, and scenarios. The word shovel, for instance, raises the image of a tool in your mind. But that's not all. You understand a shovel to be a tool for digging, and you know digging is a task performed into the ground for a specific purpose, planting seed perchance. But to bulldoze suggests a much different relationship between man and a digging tool. Even words with similar meanings can contra very different images. Sticky and adhesive, terrorist and mass murderer, illegal immigrant and undocumented immigrant, emigrant and refugee. Each word shares a similar meaning, similar definition, but brings out a distinctly different set of ideas. These ideas can be defined as a cultural unit. A sign, <clears throat> signs and symbols referentially defined by their usage and culture. Recognition of a cultural unit is produced by their existence in, quote, a world of facts, a pre-existing coded correlation, End quote. situated within the social reality, the perceived notion of reality based on dominant social narratives. Culture itself has its own meaning system. Therefore, culture itself is an extra-linguistic belief that influences linguistic competence. Culture provides a text from which we contextualize linguistic messages. Quote, it is the text that negotiates the meaning Every text is a lazy machine that requires active interpretive cooperation on behalf of its receiver. Our collaboration is possible because we appeal to the universal, the universe of intertextuality. End quote. In other words, the multilayered meanings of culture interact with certain words in our lexicon as those words connote texts, social narratives that are commonplace and that generate a sense of cultural understanding. Therefore, there are uh, there therefore exists an inseparable relationship between semantics, the interpreted meaning of a word, and the narrative that word signifies in culture. Um, I'm just going to skip out a little bit. Illegal signifies something outside social acceptability. Calling someone illegal severs them from social protection, the legal and moral rights bestowed on people because of their place in the safety of community. In relationship to the pos in relation in relation to the possible in relation to the policy on the U.S. Mexico border and immigration, the semantic choices made around these topics places discussion in starkly different contexts. An illegal immigrant is much different than an undocumented immigrant, not because there is any difference in what the terms denote, but there's a dissemblance in their connotation and their connotations, and resulting perception formed around them. And the same is so for labeling refugees as emigrants. The perception changes, and with that, reaction, the reactions offered in situations are, are altered, as the case, and in this case, limited. Um, semantic blockage. Semantic blockage here refers to the social impact of word choice. In this case, designating a person illegal actually blocks them from the just social treatment. This rhetorical legacy short circuits linguistic competence based on the foundation of any sort of pure reason and instead appeals to emotional, ideological, and cultural forces to create meaning. So, with all that, I want to talk a little bit about the term illegal to describe anybody, let alone an immigrant. So obviously the term illegal immigrant, illegal immigrant is, is very problematic. It's not just politically correct to use a different term. There's really something that goes into this that makes it problematic, and that's the social impact. But before I want to talk about that, I want to talk a little bit for a minute about just the term illegal before somebody. So if you say illegal person, if I were to, one second, I'm just back up. If you were to say illegal person, that by its very nature doesn't make any sense, really. An illegal person, I've never, I mean, there's people who can break laws 
and um, we define people as felons if they've broken federal laws. But that felony label only makes up part of their identity. We don't, and we also don't say felon person or something like that. And and furthermore, our legal actions don't necessarily define us. For a felon, that isn't always the case. Oftentimes, felons are in a you know a world of trouble after they get out of prison. But let's, I mean, I've committed misdemeanors, okay? So when I introduce myself in class, I don't describe myself as a misdemeanor, or right? that would be ridiculous. And if I did that, people would look at me strange. And they probably already do, but they would look at me even more strangely. And so the point of this is, to just go back, is that defining people as illegal, so putting that as a, um, putting that, word to pre-exist, putting that word before you describe them as what else they are, so an immigrant, creates a social situation that allows for all sorts of problematic treatment. Um, and it's this, and I believe it's the language that's grounded in the culture that allows this to happen. So what I mean is, is that, Im, you know, immigrants coming from Latin America, um, Latinos and Latinas who come here from other countries for whatever reason are often not only if even if they're accepted into the folds of society so they get their citizenship and so forth they're they're discriminated against there but before that when they're just immigrants they they can be shot by border police and oftentimes they're locked up in prison like facilities even women and children are locked in these facilities and I believe that this that this is allowed that this happens simply because of the word choice to describe them. So, and the reason that little is done about this, so little is known about this and so little is cared about this in a lot of cases is because we're accepting a social narrative that describes people as illegal. So if somebody's illegal, they're outside. I mean, legal, legal um, legality exists because society needs to have certain rules in order to exist. And we need society as human beings um, for us to survive. We rely on other people. Think about how many times you rely on somebody per day. Um, even if it's some, something as simple as, you know, stopping at a streetlight, somebody designed that, you know, and you, you need that. Otherwise, you get in car accidents, right? Or like going to the grocery store. You need those people to grow the food. You need the people to sell it. We need people every single day. We're social creatures. So describing somebody as illegal means basically that they are outside of the social system. They exist in some other realm. In this case, people become sort of stateless because if they're immigrants are coming from another country, they're not, maybe they're, they can't go back there and they're not really allowed here. So they're just these free floating agents that are defined in our culture as illegal. They have, in other words, no place and no rights. So this is the fundamental problem. And I believe that this problem, it not only stems from the language use, but is allowed to be perpetuated because of the language use. So in order to, you know, to, in order to stop this, we need to think first about what's politically correct and why that term should really be barred from our lexicons. And also, what does it mean to call somebody illegal and what are the implications of that? You know, I would propose here and now that there's no such thing as an illegal person. There are only people, and those people deserve our help, and they deserve rights. Everybody deserves rights. And that's my presentation. Thank you very much. I hope that this webcam video was okay.